minutes. Um, it's so easy. Can you see everything okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so are we ready to get started? We're supposed to start with the joke. Why? I don't think we need to start with the joke. Why, why should we start with the joke? Because then the audience will get, if we don't, then the audience will get bored. Don't get bored? Yeah. Alright, so let's, let's start a joke. Oh, I remember when you told me. Um, there was one. Uh, how many programmers does it take to change a light bulb? Zero. That's a hardware problem. <laughs> I think, I think this crowd can feel a little nerdy. Uh, what, what exactly is a Q? A Q is a letter with foreign lines behind it. Uh, <laughs> I can tell who, who the especially nerdy ones were. They laughed the first. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leah. I'm in fourth grade. Uh, I really like gymnastics. And I like the built in. I'm Chris. I really like watching gymnastics. Um, <laughs> I like building things with my kids. Um, I work at a company called Radius Networks. Um, we build all the things beacons, um, and we happen to be hiring at the time and work in this amazing building in Georgetown, for DC. Um, and when we talk about full stack there, we talk from rail services all the way down to printing and circuit boards. But today, we are going to talk about uh, building stuff. What things, what things do you like to build? Tardises. Tardises? <laughs> OK. How many Tardises have we built? Two. <coughs> two? All right. Uh, isn't that a little bit too many? No. No? What, what else should we build? How about another Tardis that actually works? <laughs> you say my Tardises don't work? We're going to need something a little more than an Arduino to make that work. <laughs> so a little background first. Um, when I was her age, I used to watch these shows on Discovery Channel where they would take students and they would build contraptions around a ride and drop off the building. Um, and I remember watching these shows and they would talk about that with engineering. Um, and that was basically my reasoning behind going and getting an engineering degree. It was because I thought we were going to build paper contraptions to throw it off the roofs. Um, so for a long time, I've, I've liked to build things. Um, and I found it a lot of fun that now that I've been doing this and have, have kids that are doing it along with me, it's, it's just a lot of fun and very rewarding. So we like to build things. Um, and I think this is important. Um, one of the things about building things is it sets you, set you aside from a lot of the other people out there. Um, do you remember that guy? That guy that drew cartoon boxes? Oh, why the wacky staff? Not staff. It's stiff. Oh. Okay. I know that doesn't maybe make as much sense. But why the wacky stiff? Uh, had a great quote. He says, When you don't create things, you become defined by your tastes rather than your ability. Your tastes only narrow and exclude people. So creative. Let's build some stuff, all right? I had her 
step on the clutch, put the car in gear, and I told her just take her foot off the clutch. And you know what happened? What? <laughs> what? It blew up in fire? No, the car stalled and she had to restart. <laughs> and that was it. So that's just kind of like, remember, not much bad things are going to happen. All right. We're going to break things. You cool with that? Yep. All right. So, what, what's the worst that's going to happen when we wire up one of our chips for all? You're going to let the magic smoke out. <laughs> you plug in the power to the ground and you see a little and the smoke comes out of it and you have to go buy a new working home. But that's like, how much does the clothes cost, you remember? 20, 30 bucks. Yeah, it's not too much. That's not a big deal. Alright. So, we're going to break things. And that's cool. You can do this. You just need to know how to get started. Alright, first step. I think one of the first projects you work on, where you just fix something that was broken. So, you remember this thing? Yep. Alright, can, can you tell everybody what was what was wrong with it? Well, the car key didn't unlock the car. The car key did not unlock the car, that's right. So, what did I give you? Um, a screwdriver, battery, a car key. That's right. Um, and what did you do when you wanted when you, to get started with that? Well, you had to find a little screw, unscrew that, um, then you would take off the top mm -hmm. to take out the battery, and then you would put in the new battery, put back on the lid, and screw it back up again. And hopefully that worked. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, what was wrong? You'd probably put the battery upside down. Yeah. That is solid trouble keeping advice. <laughs> okay. So, are we going to worry about the stuff we're building with? No. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have Arduinos, Sparks, Tessels, Raspberry Pis, Edisons, really awesome four hundred dollar Lego Mindstorms. Those, those are those are great things. But let's not worry about it. Let's just start with cheap components and just make something work. All right, let's not worry about what project we're going to build. If you're just getting started, it, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to be automating your house and um, building, I think your brother wants to build a robot to build a room that's a little advanced. Um, so let's not worry about that, and let's not worry about the tools. Um, so is this what you learned to solder with? No. But the, that's pretty awesome, though, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, luckily we don't need an $800 soldering iron to get started. Uh, what we used was just a little cheap Radio Shack soldering iron, which I think you get online for like $8. And that did just fine. So, let's start simple. Persistence is more important than having the smarts. Yep, what, what do I always do to tell you the most important part is? Um, to try hard. Right, and it doesn't really matter. All right, so the first thing you built was this. What? No, I didn't build that. That looks complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, schematics have a, a, a knack for making things look more complicated than they really are. <coughs> but that is actually what we built the first time. Um, we started with a kit. It was pretty easy. It came with instructions that were probably translated by somebody who didn't speak English as the first language, but we still don't have to follow them. Um, <coughs> And can you tell them what this is? So this is the assist machine. Um, it, so you, some of the parts, um, there are two switches. We'll show, we'll, we'll show it to them. Let okay. Me, let me pull my camera over to see if I can get this on top. Uh, Alright, awesome. So here's the assist machine. Can you explain okay. the different parts? So there's the switch. There. There's a motor, so the yellow little spark in there. There's another switch back there. Um, there is a battery pack, an arm. So that's. that's uh, can you tell how it what, what happens when, it, when you flip the switch? So you flip the switch, which turns on the motor, 
which um, triggers the switch, which um, triggers the arm to come up to push the switch, and then it reverses, the motor reverses. So, and then it, then the motor comes down to push the switch to have the arm come down, and then it turns off. Uh, when you explain it like that, I think the schematic is similar. <laughs> Are you sure I know how it works? Sure. You'll understand. And um, 
when it changes, you get a callback and you, you can find out what the last value was and what the current value was. But, uh, now this is a little uh, oversimplified. If you're going to set up a Raspberry Pi to detect button presses, you will also need something that's going to start your script. You'll need an init. Uh, you'll have all of the different domain parts of Linux. Uh, you'll need something to launch it and make sure that you can load your gem and this sort of thing. But once you get all that working together, you only need these four lines of code to get it to work. Uh, so what have we built now that we have a button and a relay and um, Linux and its scripts and all that working? We built a light switch. Yes, we've essentially built a light switch. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some of the big scary barriers. The thing is that um, people find intimidating about when we're working with hardware projects. Alright. Were you scared of soldering when you first did it? A little. A little? Is it that bad now that you know how? No, not really. Alright. <laughs> so if you're scared of the programmers carrying the screwdrivers, what's going to happen if they're carrying a soldering iron? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Alright, let's give them a quick a um, couple of steps for when you work with the soldering iron, which you need to do, and then we'll show everyone how, how, how to do it. Okay, step one. Get all of your stuff and plug in the soldering iron. Yep. Step two. Prepare the soldering iron. Step three. Eat the components. That's right. Let's... So being a, again, a highly trained professional engineer, um, uh, and despite Leah's amazing demo, you should do what I did to learn to solder, which is watch YouTube. <laughs> um, there's not much to it. The main trick is learn to heat the component. Uh, you'll watch the solder wick right into place if, if everything is working right. You shouldn't be fighting with it or trying to get it to stick, anything like that. Um, there's great guides online. Um, I like there's one on a website called SparkFun, and it'll show you a couple of uh, uh, guides and, and give you some references on like, what the solder should look like when you've got it right. Um, and as long as everything is heating up, it just kind of wants to wants to work for you. So it's not it's not that bad. Um, so let's 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 go through a couple of reminders. Let's recap a few. Okay. You can do this. You just have to learn how. And is learning is learning it that hard? No. no. 
And we have like a whole internet trying to teach us how to do these things. Okay. It won't be easy. That's what makes it awesome. If you, it, it's easier if you start small. Easier, not easy. Okay. All right, and that's that's what really is the fun part about this. That you get something that um, you know that a lot of people would have tried and then just kind of given up and put the um, Arduino in, in the closet and not worried about it ever again. All right, so thanks. But before we go, uh, we have a couple of quick things that we'd like to, to mention. Uh, first, Leo's going to give her a plug for. Okay, so I go to the YMCA gymnastics gym. Um, uh, we really like it there, so any little guys that want to do gymnastics, this is a good place to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little guys that want to do gymnastics, this is a good place to go. We really like there. Um, another thing is um, I help organize a conference called We For Good, where we have um, a multiple day hackathon for benevolent projects, um, mostly nonprofits, open source, that sort of thing. Um, uh, there's, we work on a lot of awesome projects, uh, including the things like the Humane Society, um, Purple Door, I think people were, were hacking on our spec and you know, other open source things. Um, and everybody gets together and we have a great time. Uh, this year it's going to be at the Smithsonian George Mason uh, Wildlife Conservatory, I think that's what it's called, um, in the Front Royal, Virginia. And uh, I think there's one thing that you should think about if when you're going to pick uh, which conferences you're going to next year is uh, just ask yourself one question and it is will there be red pandas <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally um so if anybody wants stickers or wants to trade they can leah is have. trying to get how many of the stickers would you like to get all of them <laughs> all the stickers so she's trying to get all the stickers which would be very impressive coming on from RubyConf. So if you'd like to trade, um, Leah has stickers and we'll be happy to trade. All right, thank you. Okay, so one was the Halloween 
touch you. Um, well, um, my brother, he sort of had to, um, like, move it, but, um... <laughs> <laughs>